everybody. Back again, you can tell with some mission fishing. Came out here in Dana Point. Been out here once before, where I fished the bays. I came up. Uh, I, th I think actually maybe I've been up here a couple times just fishing the docks and the bays and stuff like that. Typically I launch off Baby Beach, which is north of here. This is the Embarcadero boat launch. What I like about the Embarcadero boat launch, it's actually my first time launching here, but as you can see, you've got all the slips here that you can launch from. Uh, Baby Beach is fine. It's in a bay. It's a, it's a beach launch. So it's not that rough. It's not like a hard launch or anything like that. But the problem is you have to travel all the way past the jetty and then go back. So if you want to fish the shores by Goheny Beach or if you want to go out to the kelp grounds, it's going to add like two miles of paddling to your trip if you launch off Baby Beach. So it does cost money to launch here. It's $15. It's worth it for me. It's easy. The parking was situated. Just launch off the ramp. Like Fifteen dollars to save a couple miles in paddling. I mean, that makes sense to me. If you're just fishing the docks and right here around the immediate bay, I think Baby Beach is the way to go. It doesn't cost you anything. You just park. Uh, you have a nice, easy bay launch, beach launch over there. Um, but for what I'm doing, I just I want to be out quick. I want to get out of the jetty, so I don't want to have to paddle all the way along the jetty back to the grounds and when you come back you make it into the harbor you got to go all the way back down the entire harbor again this way like I, I already see the outlet it's right here it's nice it's my first time on my kayak since I got my rudder fixed so uh fast lane hooked me up uh, they took care of it you know they had it under Hobie's warranty so dude that was awesome Totally prepared to pay. They were gonna charge me 40 bucks for the cables and all that stuff. And then by the time I got there the second time, they um, I don't know, we put in a ticket with Hobie. They got it covered. Um, my drive was super loose and worn out, so they took care of that too. Thank you guys, Santa Fast Lane, uh, Dana Landing in San Diego, right there, Mission Bay area. You guys are great. And I put a lot of miles on this thing. I mean, I'm out here at least every single weekend. I mean, we're talking 52 weeks a year. Sometimes more, I'm out, so uh, it's a lot of trips. I put a lot of miles on this thing. I got one of the boats coming in behind me. Probably gonna get bait. Get out of his way. It feels good, drive feels good. But yeah, we'll get out there and see if we can get off some fish. Absolutely beautiful day. About to get the sunrise right now. on a trolling lure. The troll this little fall X wrap up to the ground so we can get stuff on the way out there. You know, I live in Carlsbad, California, which is North County, San Diego. So I'm like, really it's, it's split for me whether I'm fishing San Diego Bay, Mission Bay, which is down closer to downtown San Diego towards the border and it's just as close for me really to be up here in Orange County fishing uh, Dana Point and stuff like that so it's pretty cool it's like a 30 minute split each way then of course I've got Carlsbad itself and Oceanside right there right where I live so it's a good deal I see a good good place to live if you like fishing but you can't beat that you guys That's what fishing is all about, kayak fishing at least to me. It's almost time for the rubber top glasses. It's gonna be messing mackerel. It's Calico. This dude had like zero fight though. This is like, I'm not fighting. Peace. Nice one here in the fall. Got a little more weight to it. Hey, I feel 
sand bass. behind me. No cloud cover today. Yes, Michael. So the reason I'm not using my super noodly specific slow pitch rod to throw these slow pitch jigs is because it's so windy that if you just go vertical, even though I'm not that deep, it'll just it'll pull the lure away. Well, it's designed for like pure vertical fishing. So if I want to cast it out a little bit, that rut. They're just not the way to go because we so hard to catch. It's literally impossible to catch it. Those are designed to just go vertical. So it's super windy right now. The swells are really big. So I'm sending my jig north and south depending which way I'm paddling so that I sweep into it. But you can't really so since I'm paddling north, I'm gonna pitch it north so I can meet up with it. It's just really easier to pitch the jig on a rod with my back. I don't get the same motion, you know, at the bottom with the same flick. You can see here, it's a little harder. But I just hooked up. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Thought I was stuck. Probably a calico. But that's not my technique, that's why I'm doing it. There it is, man. Big old calico. <laughs> So like I was saying, so that's why I, I can pitch it when I'm paddling, I can pitch it in front of because the wind is just too much. When you go vertical, I drift, the lure goes, you know, I'm not anchored, so I'm paddling and I'm pitching the way that I'm paddling. So as it goes, I'm hitting it vertical and I'm basically banking on getting it on the fall because it's, it's hard to really bounce this or get that same action. As you can see, the technique works. Dudes over here with no shirts on their boat. I'm freezing my ass off. Savages, man. So I'm gonna eat my lunch and drift back. You know what's last time when my rudder broke, the wind is going the same way, it's north to south. It's a pretty heavy current, so I went way north. So the, so the cool part is basically I'm just gonna ride the current back. You know, I don't need to fight it in or anything, so. That's the cool thing about going to your fishing grounds against the current because then you just, I can eat lunch, just maybe even set like an A-rig out or something and just uh, float my way back and then by the time I'm done, you know, we'll have made up all that ground without having to do anything, not paddling, not anything. So just following the drift. In this case, we drifted the right way and no rudder failures. So back on plastic, I guess. Hopefully we don't have any issues. Made it back to the jetty. Straight out in front of this Doheny Beach. Wasn't too much going on at the beach. You know, I was out there trolling, filling the area, throwing the underspin. We used to look for halibut because Doheny Beach over there. Super shallow and it's really sandy. There's a couple patches of grass, uh, mostly sand bed, so. See if there was any halibut going, but took a few laps, about to like an hour casting some underspins, some curly tails. Uh, nothing popping up, so I'm gonna head in. A bit slow today. Uh, see some of these sport boats and stuff. Not, not a lot of people have done it. Been listening on the radio. It's been like that again. I think the water 
It, it's definitely colder. My thing's telling me right now, 63.8 degrees. That's freaking cold. Especially like a week ago, two weeks ago, it was uh, almost 70 degrees. But, well, it was, it was over 70 degrees. It was like 70, 71, you know, some places. So, freaking drop of 7 degrees in two months. Headed back out. Headed back in, I should say. So, it's a decent day. I got a few fish. You know, nothing was popping on. Kind of a weird day. Weird weather, it's cold water. Uh, cool thing about Dana Point is you've got like uh, you got the kelp beds, you got the docks, you got the beach fishing. You kind of got everything all in one. So that, that's pretty cool. Good, good stuff. Good relaxing day. You know, no tournament fishing, no battling to serve. Just kind of chill. You guys enjoy the video. Something a little different. I know I didn't have any pictures after today, so that's probably kind of a letdown. 